Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, I couldn't think of a better place to make this announcement than right here at City College. And today, I'm proud to make the appointment to the City College of Board of Trustees. And the person, clearly, that I have chosen is Miss Ivy, Mrs. Ivy Lee. <laughs> As someone who grew up in San Francisco, I am a proud product of our public school system. And I remember during that time, you know, so many of the people I grew up with, they didn't have always an opportunity to go to a four-year university. City College was the place that so many of my friends were fortunate enough to attend, and they could afford to attend City College. And they also um, were able, in some instances, to go on to four-year universities, but they always remember what this college did for them. And people like Ivy and Supervisor Kim, who are joining us here today, they made it possible for the next generation of San Franciscans to have access to free city college. <laughs> So when I was thinking about this appointment, um, of course I met with Supervisor Raphael Mandelman, who, seat, who occupied this seat, and asked, what do you want to see in a person? What do you want to see for this particular seat? He said, I want someone who is going to take care of the college, who is going to focus on making sure that it's financially stable, making the hard decisions, because there are a number of challenges that we still face and we have to make sure that the person who is in this seat will do what is right by this college. And when thinking about someone, I couldn't think of anyone better than Ivy Lee to occupy this seat. Not only has she led the efforts around Free City College with Supervisor Kim, but she has pushed for a number of equity programs and things that matter in bridging the gap between many of our communities of color. And education plays a critical role in getting young people to a better place. I have admired her work from afar as a legislative aide, the chief of staff to Supervisor Kim, but more importantly, she is a civil rights attorney, someone who has spent her entire career fighting for the most vulnerable of our citizens. And when you think about what is needed here, we have to fight on a regular basis for our immigrant community, for our young and our communities of color, and for people who are looking for an opportunity to advance and to grow and to have a better life. City College is that place. City College needs someone who's a fighter, someone who is going to take care of it for the long term. And so I am just really excited and honored um, to make this appointment because I know that she will look at things and decisions from an equity lens. I know that she will make the hard decisions and stand her ground and explain to each and every one of you why, why she's making a decision. And, and at the end of the day, it's about serving and supporting the people who need this college the most. And that's what matters. That's what matters for the long term, is protecting our college for the next generation of young people who are growing up in the city. Some of you know that education is a really important part of my platform. So I didn't want to make a political decision. I wanted to make the right decision. And Ivy Lee is the right decision. And so before she takes the oath of office, I wanted to ask Supervisor Jane Kim to say a few words because they have worked hand in hand over the past few years on so many important pieces of legislation. So I wanted to give her an opportunity uh, to say a few words before we swear Ivy Lee into the Community College Board of Trustees. Good afternoon. Mayor Breed, Chancellor Rocha, President Davila, the Board of Trustees, our elected officials, community leaders, and the students of CCSF. 
It is my honor to share the stage with these two women leaders. And I've said it before and I will say it again, I am proud to live in the largest American city with a woman as its mayor. But we know it's not enough just to elect women leaders at the top. We need to continue to place qualified women at every level. And this mayor has led her first week with two women appointees. I want to acknowledge Mayor London Breed. In an era of politics where partisan tr partisanship trumps bridge building, Mayor Breed demonstrates her commitment to the residents of our city by selecting, in my humble opinion, the most qualified and experienced candidate to serve on the city, San Francisco City College Board of, a tr Board of Trustees. <laughs> London and I have been colleagues over the last six years, and today's appointment reconfirmed what I've known of London, her sincere commitment to education in light of what is meant in her life and also in the life of Ivy and mine. I've known Ivy Lee for almost two decades. When we first met, she was a staff attorney at the Asian Law Caucus, representing those who cannot afford the legal services and the caliber of talented attorneys that are needed to protect the rights of all of our residents. The image of Ivy that, however, is burned in my memory, which I believe is still most representative of the Ivy Lee I know, and not surprising for those of you that know Ivy intimately, took place late at night at around 2 a.m. We were young. Her future partner and husband, Victor Huang, convinced but really hoodwinked a group of innocent young people in a time prior to ordinances that banned putting political signs up on poles and lampposts to drive trucks and ladders in the middle of the night to climb the highest city poles to put up political signs for a particular candidate. After we successfully canvassed Chinatown, North Beach, Mission, and the Richmond, most of us tired and bleary-eyed dragged ourselves into cars, and I, as I slumped into the back seat, driving down the six-lane Gary Boulevard, where we actually emerged into uh, what would become Supervisor London Beach, uh, Breeds District, out of the Masonic Tunnel, I turned my head and my eyes widened at the sight of Victor Huang holding a ladder and Ivy Lee, not at the first, second, third, or fourth step, but at the top of the ladder, in her kitten heels, jumping up and down, slapping a sign onto a pole with nothing to hold onto. Fearless and fear-inspiring are the words most often used to describe Ivy Lee. Ivy Lee and I, over the last 20 years, have become conspirators, friends, and now sisters. It was in her and Victor's kitchen in 2004, my literal kitchen cabinet, that I decided to run for office, the Board of Education. Ivy wrote the first $500 check to almost every single campaign that I have run in. And for those of you that know Ivy, you know that she is a tenacious and dogged advocate and attorney. She has never lost a case. But like many women, when she had three children, she made a difficult choice to be an outstanding attorney and public servant or press the pause button on a successful and meaningful career to be an outstanding mother, and she chose the latter. It was in my first year serving on the Board of Supervisors that Ivy found herself in a predicament which faces many talented, intelligent, and brilliant women in America. Her third child, Aaron Huang, who is here today, was about to begin kindergarten. And she, while law firms and employers should have been knocking down on her doors, as they should of all of our talented mothers, she was instead faced with the inconvenient truth of a gap in her work resume. We have developed a mythical narrative in our country, perhaps to swatch our guilt in not investing in our families, in our children, and in our working parents, that gender equality means that women can have it all, be a successful parent and worker. But as most women have learned, there are only 24 hours in a day. Women make up 51%, 57% of our college attendees, but only 4.8% of Fortune 500 CEOs. Women make up 51% of our law school students, 
but 90% of equity partners in the 50 best law firms for women. Headlines abound in the media and scholarly reports. Where do our talented American women vanish to? I took advantage of circumstances that should not face women, and I spent six months cajoling and recruiting Ivy Lee to consider a different pathway of public service, which is in public policy making. She resisted, insistent on her inherent and justified distrust of politics and politicians. But I am also dogged, or just lucky, and she relented and started in my office in January 2013, where she soon, as where she soon assumed the role of chief of staff in an all-woman and soon to become all-mothers legislative staff. And over the next two terms, my office was extremely productive, thanks to Ivy Lee. In 2014, SF Magazine named our office the workhorse of the year for introducing and passing the most legislation on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. And we would continue to hold this title in coming years. In fact, when Supervisor Peskin came onto the Board of Supervisors, he confided in me that there were only two people he feared, his wife and Ivy Lee. <laughs> Fear is a theme you will hear throughout any speech pertaining to Ivy Lee. And many of the legislation most associated with our office, the Fair Chance Act, which brought our city into an elite group of localities which have taken down barriers to millions of Americans who have either been arrested or convicted of a crime, but just want to pursue honest work, was the first ordinance that Ivy successfully passed despite strong opposition. Now, while Ivy was an artful advocate for the ordinance and its goals, what Ivy did the most to move this ordinance from one that um, tepidly had five co-sponsors to eventually a unanimous vote was her skillful listening. She listened and throughout and through the conversations Ivy realized that it was not that stakeholders opposed the goal of banning the box but needed assurances that we would make the policy administrable so that we could achieve this goal. She went on to lead the legislation and the following year then led the negotiation and drafted the strongest and most progressive minimum wage ordinance in the nation, an ordinance which impacted our lowest paid workers, two thirds of whom are women, and who just got their raise to $15 an hour this past July 1st. And as Mayor Breed has mentioned, she was the lead architect with another woman, Elisa Messer, on the policy that most impacted the institution that we are standing here on today making San Francisco the only city in the nation to make community college free for all of our residents. And most recently, coming full circle on Ivy's commitment to women and children and working families of San Francisco, she worked with Supervisor Yi and I to draft a measure which we would pass this past June 5th to pass the nation's single largest investment in childcare and early childhood education which, by the way, is also an investment in the productivity of our workforce, and in particular for women who often choose between economic independence and a meaningful career and parenting. <laughs> Ivy has been my chief advisor and shield, and while she will state her utmost loyalty to me, it has always been clear that she answers to no one but the community. I am boss in title only, Ivy, I learned, will do whatever she wants, even when I disagree. But I have always 100% trusted that it's because she believes it is what is best for our community and our city, and she is often, if not always, right. I want to thank Ivy for your, leadership, your service and your leadership. But I also want to recognize something. We talk a lot about leadership, but there's a characteristic of leadership that I have come to appreciate the most over my last year on the Board of Supervisors. And that is leadership which unselfishly identifies other leaders, places support in their growth and development, and ultimately their faith in their actions, their words, and their decision. So I want to thank Mayor Breed again for displaying this leadership by confidently appointing leaders who you know will best represent our city. And I believe that Ivy Lee has represented that over her career. Yeah. So without further ado, the swearing in. Thank you, Supervisor Kim, for that dissertation. <laughs> but who better could articulate 
just really all the amazing work that this incredible person has done and will do for City College. So thank you for being here today. All right, it is time. Come on over. We're going to try to do it in the, in the uh, microphone. Okay. They want to hear you. Okay. okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Ivy Lee. I, Ivy Lee. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I bear true faith and allegiance. That I <laughs> true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California that I take this obligation freely that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion or purpose of evasion and that I will fit well and faithfully discharge and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which the duties upon which I'm about to enter I'm about to enter and during such time and during such time as I hold the office of as I hold the office of member of the board of trustees member of the board of trustees of the city college of San Francisco of the city college of San Francisco congratulations <laughs> so much for taking the time to be here today. I have tried to schedule with a lot of your offices so I know how busy um, all of you are. So I just really want to thank you for taking the time out to be here today. And I think the best way for me to do that is to keep this as short and sweet as possible. I was genuinely surprised and very honored to be offered this opportunity to serve by our, by our new mayor. When you spoke with me about your values, especially about what education has meant in your own life and your hopes that City College could be a key to open the doors of opportunity for every single person who has ever dreamt of more, I could hear the determination in your voice to make that a reality. You told me that you wanted someone who would do the work because they shared your values and your belief in education and educators as critical means to change someone's life for the better. I am truly honored that you would reach out to me and place your faith in me to do this work because education and teachers, both in and out of school, have made all the difference in my world, all the difference in the world in my life too. One of those teachers was my grandmother. I was raised by my grandmother, who's 95 years old this year, while my parents were moving from state to state, trying to get their feet on the ground as new immigrants. My grandmother instilled in me the belief that getting an education is the key to so much. Financial security, opportunity, freedom, and security, and much more. She told me that she had been the top student in her village, but as a girl, she was never given the opportunity to quench her thirst for knowledge. But she read every single day. When she came to America, she would ride the bus several hours. <laughs> just to get to an ESL class. When I was in elementary school, she would bring books home and ask me to read them to her and teach her what the words meant. Later, when I was at a very low point and failing several courses in college, <laughs> I still remember that Mesa College in San Diego and Pasadena City College saved me. They gave me an opportunity to get my feet back on the ground and to get myself together. And it was a place that I could afford. Without those institutions, I know I would not have gotten myself to law school. Thank you. <laughs> Because of that experience and others, 
I have no regrets about dedicating my life to trying to create opportunities and break down the barriers for other people, especially folks that have no, they have no safety net. I'm excited to work alongside the new mayor's administration, the administration of City College, my new colleagues on the board of trustees, the faculty and students, as well as the community organizations who you guys made Free City College happen. And I just want to make sure that people know that I know that. <laughs> um, I know that I have a lot to learn, but I want to thank you in advance for your patience because I want to support the leadership that you have already shown. Part of the strength is, of course, Free City College. And I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to work on that because of Jane Kim. Jane, you gave me the freedom and the trust to work with the community and to make Free City the most inclusive program in the country. I would not be standing here today without your faith in me. You are one of the teachers in my life who I know opened a door for me and taught me so much about grace under fire and how to lead with integrity. I truly look forward to working with you and everyone here to make Free City College permanent and year round. <laughs> Mayor Breed, I, I really, I wanna thank you for your for your faith in me and for thinking that I could do the work that you want to do to open up the doors of opportunity for everyone, anyone who's ever dreamed of something more. Thank you to both of you and it's, it's pretty overwhelming to have the support of two women of color like you and I really wanna thank you for that. Um, last but not least, I really want to thank my family. Um, you're the ones that always tell me that I can when I think I can't. Um, so Aaron and Kaiden and Ronan who's in Japan, thank you for everything. I'm so lucky to be your mom. And I think everyone knows you, you can't do anything without good partners. And Victor, he's the best partner anyone could ever want. So thank you. Thank you. And thanks a lot. That's it. <laughs>